Hey guys, what I just received in the mail is my new V Raptor, but not the Vista Vision, but the 8K Super 35. I'm excited about this because the Vista Vision version of the V Raptor was a pretty cool camera, but for wildlife filming, which I'm mainly doing, uh, paired with the CN20 with the 50 to 1000, I didn't really want to go to shoot at 5K or 6K crop down in it and uh, get rid of my uh, the helium cameras that I've been using for many years because it just didn't make sense to me to replace it and then just crop in that much. But now the new camera, which I have here, basically has a smaller sensor. It's, uh, it's even smaller than the helium and I'm gonna be talking about that in a little bit. So this is the new camera, which is identical in the form factor to the VistaVision uh, version that I've been using up until now but always with the Promista full frame lenses like this one the 19 to 45 it's been a beautiful combination but I now wanted to really see if I would pair the CN20 my go-to lens for wildlife filming with the V Raptor Super 35 and it, what I thought would be really practical is if I shot both the helium camera and the v raptor the super 35 version side by side and put it to the same zoom settings from 50 millimeter wide and then we can actually see how much less of an image area we're seeing because of that smaller sensor and i want to have multiple comparisons 50 millimeter 200 500 1000 millimeters so we see a little bit how much more tight we're actually getting in which often with wildlife is what you want. But sometimes I could see myself that I would like to have a little bit more of a, of a wider image, especially if I'm filming in the air, when I'm zooming all the way back and I wanna incorporate the landscape with it. But anyway, I think there's always trade-offs, you know, some benefits and, and some uh, disadvantages too. But the key thing I'm after is really the ISO performance. And uh, there's so many really cool new features. You can shoot up to 120 frames a second in full 8K resolution and so on. But yeah, let's go ahead and change to the telephoto lens that I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna have to hurry up here because we're losing the light, but actually I wanna do the filming in low light because that's when we're really gonna see the differences between the two sensors because the you know, in, in beautiful sunlight, you're not gonna see a big difference because the helium sensor has been really an amazing sensor all along as well. up here in Alaska and it's already real winter. My boys are out on the ice, so I'm gonna ask them to help out. And uh, I wanna put these two cameras right side by side. I have the Red Helium Super 35 and then on the other side, the uh, V-Raptor 8K Super 35. The only difference really between the two, the VistaVision and the 8K Super 35 is actually what you see right here if you turn the camera around. So anyway, I'm gonna do the side-by-side -side shoots. The key things I'm gonna be looking at is how much more of a telephoto reach am I getting with that sensor because it's a little bit smaller. And then of course, what is the ISO performance like?
So there's different pros and cons between, you know, a smaller and a larger sensor. When you film wildlife and you want to have more reach, a smaller, a little bit of a crop sensor, if it still has the same resolution, like 8K, like this one, the V-Raptor has, it's actually a benefit, you know, in, in many scenarios. With all these strong telephoto lenses, it doesn't really you know, affected that much because you already have very shallow depth of field in the first place because you're zooming in so much. So in a way, you know, the question is why did they change those sensor sizes? And I think one of the big reasons is that they would like to have a sensor that really works well with all the different glass that's just, you know, calculated for a true Super 35 sensor. And the Red Helium, the other camera that we've been using for so many years, this one has a little bit larger sensor. It's uh, close to 30 millimeter wide in comparison to the 26 of the V-Raptor Super 35. And so now when you have lenses like the 30 to 300, it really will make a big difference because you can shoot at 8K, you can zoom through the entire range from 30 millimeters all the way to 300 millimeters. And I believe that that lens is gonna be one of the most beautiful and you know lenses with this, with this uh, V-Raptor Super 35. And it's this lens right here. I haven't used this lens very often in the, in the recent years really because I had to go down to seven and a half or seven K and it would otherwise vignette a lot. And that's really a big benefit right now from that new V-Raptor because I can just see that shine with that 30 to 300. You shoot it at wide open at uh, 2.9 or you know just to stop down a little bit and it's gonna be a beautiful bouquet in the background. So I look forward to, um, I'll do a number of test shots with this lens as well as with the CN20. Any of my tests are not scientific. I'm gonna just like, how am I gonna use this camera? How I'm gonna just, you know, what's, what's my impression on it? In the last years, if I'm honest, when I was shooting in gimbals from the air or so, I often didn't use this lens because it would vignette more. But this new V-Raptor Super 35 is not gonna vignette with this lens. It's gonna be beautiful. So I can see a lot of wildlife shoots actually moving forward with this lens as well. And so I'm excited about it.